This is the second video in our solution equilibrium unit. This video is going to be all about buffers. So we're going to, in this video, look at what they are and how they work. And we'll briefly talk about how you do calculations with buffers, but we're going to save a lot of the calculations for class. So what you need to know in order to be successful when it comes to buffers is you need to make sure that you understand conjugate acids and bases. So if I give you a weak acid and I give you a salt that has a common ion, could you tell me what the conjugate base is for that weak acid? You need to know how to calculate pH, so pH is the negative log of H+. Plus. Simple calculations like that you need to make sure that you don't forget. You also need to know the relationship between Ka and Kb, so if you have one of them how do you find the other? Hint, it's on the equation sheet. And you need to know your solubility rules, so you need to know that anything with potassium, nitrate, ammonium, or sodium, those are always soluble. If you have anything with those four ions, it's always going to be soluble. So when it comes to buffers, you need to know what they are and how they work. So a buffer is a solution that is a weak acid or base and it's salt. So you're going to have usually a weak acid and there's going to be a salt and the salt is simply an ionic compound and what that salt contains is the conjugate base of that weak acid. Or maybe you have a weak base and it's salt and the salt would contain the conjugate acid. So essentially you have a solution that has a weak, a weak being keyword, conjugate acid base pair. And what they do is they resist any major changes in pH. And so these solutions, essentially they're going to contain relatively high concentrations. Now, relatively high can be one times 10 to the negative third molar or higher. And they're gonna contain relatively high concentrations of both the acid and the base. Um, and you want their concentrations to be as equal as possible. And we're, we're gonna talk more about that later. The most common real world example of a buffer, or maybe not most common for you, but one that you should be aware of because it helps you live is the buffer of carbonic acid and hydrogen carbonate. So carbonic acid is H2CO3 and hydrogen carbonate is HCO3 minus. So you have a weak acid and you have its conjugate base. Well what they do is carbonic acid and hydrogen carbonate work together to keep the pH of your bloodstream around 7.4. So any addition of acid or base will essentially be uh, resisted. That change will be resisted because of the buffer solution. So then your the pH of your blood might only change by 0.01 instead of changing by an entire pH unit. Again, a buffered solution is a solution that resists a change in pH after you add a strong acid or a strong base. The buffer consists of a weak acid and its conjugate base, or a weak base and its conjugate acid. So you can either have a weak acid and a conjugate base, or a weak base and a conjugate acid. And these conjugates come from a salt, an ionic compound that is a strong electrolyte that dissociates completely. So then a buffer is going to contain an acidic species that will neutralize any added base, right? So the acid is meant to neutralize the base and a basic species to neutralize any acid. So then let's say that you have um, a buffer and you add some sodium hydroxide. Well, what's gonna happen is the acidic portion of the buffer is going to react to neutralize the OH minus in order to keep the pH stable. Or if you were to add a strong acid, then the basic portion of that will neutralize that added H plus to resist any changes in pH. So then this just shows you what a buffer solution would look like. So you'd have, in this case, a weak acid and its conjugate base, so acetic acid and sodium acetate. Notice you have acetic acid, that's the weak acid, and the salt has sodium and acetate. Well, sodium is always neutral because it comes from a strong base. So then we have this acetate ion, and the acetate ion is the conjugate base. So notice in solution here, we have acetic acid molecules. It's a weak acid, it's not going to ionize very much. So we have acetic acid molecules. We have some H plus ions because it will ionize a little bit. And then we have sodium ions and acetate ions. So we have some of these acetate ions that are partially ionized because of the weak acid, but then we have a whole lot of these acetate ions that come from the salt because a salt is an ionic compound. Because it has sodium, it's completely soluble and it will dissociate into its ions. So ways to make a buffer. So one way is we can simply mix the weak acid and its conjugate base or a weak base and its conjugate acid, or we can add a strong acid and we can neutralize a weak base or add a strong base and neutralize the weak acid. So let's take a more detailed look at these four ways to make a buffer 
solution. So we start out with having a weak acid and its conjugate base. So the salt is going to contain the conjugate base, like HCN, this is a weak acid, and NaCN. Na, neutral, we ignore, so the CN minus, that's the conjugate base. Or we can have a weak base and its conjugate acid. So NH3 is ammonia. You need to remember your strong acids, your strong bases, and then anything else you assume is weak. So NH3 is ammonia, NH4Cl, ammonium chloride. Well, Cl comes from a strong acid, therefore it's neutral, so we ignore the Cl minus. So then NH4 plus is actually the conjugate acid. Or we can have excess weak acid and strong base, and this is where we get into um, the stoichiometry behind it. So if we have HCN and NaOH, HCN is a weak acid, notice that it is excess. We have two moles of HCN, one mole of NaOH which means then we essentially get the weak acid and the salt. So this is essentially this third and fourth way to make a buffer. This is essentially taking an extra step before these first two, okay? Because if we look at the weak base and the strong acid, we have excess weak base, we have a strong acid, and we're essentially getting this buffer solution at the end. So with buffers, let's consider a buffer solution that's composed of HF, so hydrofluoric acid, what kind of acid is that? It's weak, it's not one of the seven strong. And we have sodium fluoride, okay? So we have a weak acid, and then F minus is the conjugate base. So the acidic component is HF. So if you add a base, the HF will neutralize any of that base. We will use up some of the HF in the buffer. The basic component is F minus. Remember, it's a weak base. So if we were to add any acid, the F minus will neutralize that acid. We'll use some of the F minus component up uh, in order to neutralize. Okay, so looking at how the buffer works, so in the middle, we have the buffer. Here's a buffer with equal concentrations of the weak acid and the weak conjugate base. So if we add a small amount of acid or base, it's only going to change one portion of the buffer. So the pH isn't gonna change much. So let's say that we add acid. Okay, here's the H plus. The acid needs to be neutralized by the basic portion of the buffer, which in this case is the F minus. So we're gonna use up some of this F minus. We're gonna have H plus plus F minus. It's gonna yield HF. So we're going to add more HF, just a little bit more, and we're going to use up some of the F minus. Now let's go the other way. What if we have OH minus? So let's say we had a strong base, we had potassium hydroxide. Then this basic OH minus, this basic ion, needs to react with the acidic portion of the buffer in order to be neutralized. The acidic portion is HF. So the HF is going to react with the OH minus, and if we actually look at it down here, the acid is going to donate a proton, so we're then gonna get F minus and H2O. So notice we add a little bit more F minus because we're creating it, we're using up some of that HF in order to neutralize. Now I want you to really pay attention into this particle diagram down here. Notice initially we had equal amounts. Well, after we add either an acid or a base, we no longer have equal amounts. It's important that you understand how to create a particle diagram when it comes to any reaction. So then we're gonna look at buffer capacity and pH because buffer capacity is going to be important as we look at neutralization. So buffer capacity is simply the amount of acid or base that can be neutralized by the buffer before there's going to be a significant change in pH because we have a buffer that has weak acid, weak base. But if we add enough strong acid, it's gonna use up the entire basic component of the buffer and then the pH is going to change much more drastically. So the buffer capacity is going to depend on the concentrations of the components of the buffer. So the greater the concentrations of that weak acid, weak base pair, the greater the buffer capacity capacity. So what that means is if we have higher concentrations of that acid-base pair, we can add much more strong acid or strong base before that buffer runs out. Now the maximum buffering is going to occur when that acid-base pair are similar, when the concentrations are similar. So you want that ratio of acid to base to be as close to one as possible. That's when it's gonna give you maximum buffering, when the ratio of acid to base is as close to one as possible. Okay? And then the pH of the buffer is actually related to the Ka of the weak acid and to the relative concentrations. So there's two important characteristics of buffers. The resistance to change the pH, okay? so you want it to be able to resist um, as much acid and base as possible, and then its buffering capacity. So those are gonna be two important characteristics. So then what we're to do is we're just going to briefly look at how we would calculate the pH of a buffer and we're going to go into much more detail 
when it comes to calculations in class. So let's consider the equilibrium constant expression for just a generic acid. So we have HA, which is aqueous, plus H2O, which is liquid, um, is at equilibrium with H3O plus, or simply H plus, which is aqueous, and A minus, which is also aqueous. So we can write the Ka expression, right? Ka, because it's a weak acid that's ionizing, is equal to products over reactants, ignore solids, liquids. So H plus times A minus over HA. So when we rearrange this to solve for H plus, and the reason that we're rearranging to solve for H plus is because normally it's going to ask us to calculate the pH. So when we rearrange it, we get H plus equals Ka times the weak acid over the weak base. This is the only formula that you need to memorize. H plus, H3O plus is the same as H plus, but H plus is equal to Ka times... Okay, and here's our ratio. So I talked about the ratio on that last slide. Here's the weak acid on top and the weak base on the bottom. This is the only thing you need to memorize. This is not on the equation sheet. Just memorize this. There are some other um, formulas that your book talks about, like the henderson hasselbeck equation. We're not using that. If we use this one equation, you can solve everything, and it's going to make your life so much easier. So the concentration of H plus equals Ka times the concentration of the weak acid over the concentration of the weak base. This should always be H plus, this should always be Ka. So then some buffer calculations. They're typically going to require us to calculate a few different things. We might be asked just to find the pH of the buffer alone. So it might give us some concentrations like of the weak acid and the salt and say what's the pH. Or it could ask us to find the pH of a buffer after we've added either a strong acid or a strong base. Now because it's a buffer system, the pH will not change drastically because we're going to assume that we're under the buffer capacity. It should change less than a factor of one one on the pH scale. So then we're going to look at the pH range. So like I said, we're going to be going through calculations in class. We're going to look at how to calculate the pH of the buffer alone, and then in the next slide we're going to talk about what happens when you add something. So um, the pH range, so the range of pH values that a buffer can work is called the pH range. Now the optimal pH, this goes back to maximum buffering. The optimal pH is where pH equals pKa. This P means we take the negative log of H plus, which means this P for pKa essentially means you're taking the negative log of the Ka value. So pKa is simply negative log of Ka. That's all this P means. It means power of, so you take the negative log. So the optimal pH is when your concentrations of weak acid and weak base are identical. Okay, so what we want to do when we want to find the optimal pH for a buffer to work is we want to look at the Ka value. So we want to choose a Ka with an exponent that is as close to the desired pH as possible. And then we want to use equal amounts of acid and base. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at what happens when we add a strong acid or a strong base to a buffer. So when we add a strong acid or a strong base, what happens and how can we calculate the pH? When you add a strong acid or a strong base, first of all, this strong acid or strong base, these are strong electrolytes, right? They ionize or they dissociate completely in water. When you add a strong acid or a strong base, you're going to have a neutralization reaction. What we want to do is we want to determine how the neutralization reaction affects the amount of acid and base that's in the buffer. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate it like a stoichiometry problem. And then we're going to find that H plus and A minus concentration after that neutralization has taken place. So this visual down here helps us. So first we have the buffer that has the weak acid in the base. If we add a strong acid, we use up some of the A minus because this A minus is the base, it has to react with the acid, and we make more HA. So essentially what we've done is we've added more weak acid and we've taken away some weak base. Then we're going to calculate the new values and we're going to plug it into that formula that I said you needed to memorize. If we add a strong base, then we do a stoichiometry calculation in which we've used up some of the acid and we've created more base, and then we plug those calculations in to that formula that you needed to memorize. So essentially we start with a stoichiometry problem which means we have to use moles and then we use equilibrium and we use the equation that you had to memorize to find the pH. Now we're just kind of combining stoichiometry and equilibrium when we look at the pH of a buffer. And like I said, we're gonna go much more into detail on examples and calculations with buffer solutions.